Always worth noting when you're doing lining paper. Always leave a little gap. About one mil, something like that. And uh, because if you don't, they tend to ruck up when they dry out. <laughs> Good word, isn't it? Ruck up. And just use some very fine filler. And let that go off then, just lightly sand it. You only need just enough to cover that gap. You know, fill it in. And I'll tell you what. You won't see where they join afterwards. I found this on the um, bedroom ceiling upstairs. I was really pleased with that. And I'll just wait for this paper to go off. Uh, dry out a little bit more. And then uh, I should put the filler down it. Right, back at my bench again. <laughs> I'd forgotten about these. Um, when I was exploring all this 12 volt stuff, I came across these. And uh, I thought, well, they'd be handy because they give you 12 volt points. But how would you mount that in a room? And uh, at work, we've got loads of these. Um, they're scrap, by the way, boxes of them. They're all going to go in a skip at some point. Uh, but I thought what I could do, I'll just disconnect this a second, is cut myself because I've got some um, quite um, sturdy plastic sheet. Well, sheet isn't the word, it's about, I don't know, six mil thick. It's pretty stiff stuff. Um, cut a plate to go in there and then mount, mount that actually in the in the plate and that way you could use a bat box a domestic bat box to house it and uh, lucky enough this plastic sheet that i've got uh, my, it was my dad's um but it's green i thought how apt you know so you'd know it was 12 volt just at a glance because it's you know it's got a green backing to it um yeah that's how i proposed to mount those my only reservation with these is do I really need to display the voltage? And, you know, how much are these LEDs using to show how much capacity is in the battery? Uh, I suppose the alternative is I could put a small switch below it, so you switch it on or off. I am undecided on those. What I would say about them, though, these are brilliant in a car when you don't have a USB socket, because as long as you've got a 12-volt supply, A, it's giving you a sort of reasonable reading of the battery. I, w I wouldn't say it's 100% accurate. Uh, but it does give you those two extra points. So if I was going to put one in a car, I'd certainly wire it up so it only comes on when the ignition is on. Uh, but yeah, great little things. They're relatively cheap as well. Panel mounted, you see. Uh, I do own uh, a couple of Volkswagens, one of which is a, a VW T25 or T3. And uh, certainly I'm going to put one of those in there because... USB points is uh, well, that's a pain when you when you're working with old vehicles they just don't exist but that's a nice easy way of doing it runs on 12 volt I don't think it's going to be much use around Ralph's house there I've got five of them but we'll see we'll see um, I suppose I could disconnect the LEDs you know that's one way of doing it I don't know we'll see uh, preparing my garden for next year. Make sure I've got all the seeds I need. And here we have Russian potatoes. And it's true enough, look. Sedak.ru <laughs> well, At least the sell by date is well in advance. Yeah, not um, seed potatoes, but potato seeds. Should be interesting. Well, there's, your there's your instructions. And I think you have to keep it in a warm windowsill earlier in the year and then plant out got them on ebay i don't think they were well, i don't know it worked out about a fiver including the i think the postage was more than the seeds uh, but should be interesting shouldn't it this arrived today and as the label says it's an automatic transfer switch um, or an ats there are i i would think that this is probably made in china i'm just guessing 
uh, it doesn't seem to have any make attached to it, which is funny, really, when you read the manual, you know, if you've got any problems, you know, get back to us, and, but there's no address. <laughs> Bizarre, isn't it? Anyway, these are proving quite popular, and there's a lot of reasons for that. Automatic transfer switches. You know, you'll generally find these, certainly in theatres, places like that, so that if the power goes, it can transfer to a generator, something like that, and it does it automatically. But there are a few of these around, and there's certainly cheaper ones around, um, but the time between the switching, um, particularly if you've got something like a, a PC connected to it, is fairly crucial, I'd say. Otherwise, the, the computer or laptop or whatever just switches off, doesn't it? Um, so it's a very fast changeover. Now, the reason I've got this is, at the moment, I'm having to manually switch to the solar, um, which is a bit of a bind, especially if you're in and out of the house. This thing will do it automatically. So you can power items in your house off the solar, and when the batteries, which are charged by the solar system, drop below a specific voltage, and you can set that, it will automatically switch to mains. Um, prices are sort of fluctuating at the moment, but currently... Uh, you can buy one of these in the UK on eBay for about £129. That's the cheapest price I've found, to be honest. Uh, you can order them from China, but the savings aren't that great, really. And uh, you can have problems getting them delivered, as I discovered. Um, but anyway, this is the automatic transfer switch, and I'm going to go through everything on the bottom. So on the right, you've got... Um, a connection to your battery. This is purely to monitor the state of charge of your batteries. This is the output. Um, so to this you connect a 240 volt so socket. There's your public power, whoever's providing your electricity in that side. And uh, you're thinking, where's the earth? Where's the earth, Ralph? I'll get to that. And this is the inverter. The inverter is a box that converts 12 volt to 240 volt I've got an inverter about two and a half kilowatt uh, so that would technically be your solar side that will be your mains power side the earths are all screwed into one common block beneath um, I've got a strip of that uh, brass strip with screws in it and all the earths can go in so that's no problem so yes you do need to earth quite rightly um, but you don't do it through the box it's done independently below so very important you make a very good job of your wire and tidy wire. And if you're not an electrician, don't buy one of these and try and connect it up. You know, you've got to have at least a reasonable knowledge of electrics before you connect one of these up. So hopefully, some point in the week, um, I'll get this connected up and uh, I can demo how it works on the solar system. Right, that's the hallway painted red. Um, some of these doors were a nightmare because it's got a lot of the original leaded paint on it and it took me a while to find just the right paint that won't react with what's underneath because I just wanted to get it smooth. I didn't want to strip all the paint off. It's too much work. Uh, but as I say, this panel came out really great. But this one, this is the door to the back room. Now, originally... When I first moved into this house, there was just a cupboard here. There was no door. That was all filled up with plasterboard. Uh, it had vanished in a sense. Um, but I did manage to source some doors locally, which were an exact match for these. I think I paid £15 for three of them, something like that. It wasn't that expensive, and I've had them in store for quite a while. Anyway, I fitted this door some months ago, uh, but finally I've got around to painting all this. Uh, but sadly, when my father put a cupboard in, he cut into a lot of this architrave, so I had to replace that one. Uh, I managed to salvage that from around the kitchen door, because this one doesn't match quite. But when I took it off, I took off a length and just put it back there. I would think there was a length of that going between there and there. Um, when I finally get through my rubbish pile of bits that I've saved, I'll put a piece in there. I shall just glue that on with quick setting adhesive, you know, that no nails type stuff. I'm not gonna bother trying to roll plug back to the wall. 
uh, it's not coming under any strain um, but I am tempted to put some kind of shelving at the top of that because it's a bit of a wasted space that or I may just excuse this wire uh, I may fit another light here because this part of the hallway gets dark so I think when those hall lights come on a small light should come up here but it's finding the right thing in a way I wish I'd managed to get three of those but I could only get two and I've got no chance of finding the third as I say, it came out of a cinema in Wales, and my guess is they were probably built locally. Uh, great match for this, but um, yeah, I'm certainly going to need some kind of light around there. These door handles and the old-fashioned mortise locks, you can still buy them. Screw fix, uh, is it screw fix? Probably screw fix do them. Certainly tool station do them, and you can order these knobs. They're not in Bakelite anymore, they're in a sort of plastic but they look good enough I think to be honest so yes we've finished all this hallway and my next job is to put a sliding door the other side of the kitchen because this is the original door but it only opens so far because there's a worktop behind it which just seems ridiculous and you're losing space in the kitchen so I'm going to put a slider that slides behind the worktop this side of the kitchen yeah, so that's the hallway done. As far as the flooring in here is concerned, I don't have any yet uh, because I'm undecided as to what to put down. I don't want carpet because, you know, you're right on the threshold of the doorstep and even with mats and all the rest of it, carpets just get filthy, don't they? So, um, possibilities including tiling it, a wooden floor, I don't know. Uh, Possibly even lino, vinyl, that may be an option as well. Might be the easiest to get and probably the cheapest in the end. Uh, but I, I really want something that I can mop and that doesn't accrue dust. And uh, that's pretty much throughout the house. And this back room, which between my son and I, we've decided should be a little workshop. And actually it makes sense to do this room next because... As I work on other bits of the house, I've got an area in which to work, to cut wood or, or whatever. Um, and I'm going to put kitchen worktops all around this room. Because originally, um, the idea was to change this back room into a kitchen and use the kitchen for something else. Um, but that plan's gone out the window. So we're going to change this into a worktop, a worktop room with a table in the middle of it vice various bits and pieces so if you want to make something and we're both artistic so um it would just be a nice area to work in so you know my son can say look I'm, i want the studio for the evening that's fine he can work away in there and it'll have all light woodworking tools no power, big power machinery maybe a pillar drill at most um but it'll give us a nice little area to work in and give us something to do in the winter as well so yeah i'm really pleased with these uh, door fits nicely, lock works. Um, so, yeah, that's good. And I will, well, I don't know if we need to, but there is a lock on that door. Um, but I'm not sure you'd need to lock it from this side. So I should just leave the lock on the inside, I think. Um, you know, with an old-fashioned conventional key. It's rather nice in a lot of ways to be putting this house back in good repair again uh, and as I say I'm not trying to replicate the 1930s I don't want to live in the past but I do like to pick out some of the features that I have you know so there we go that's the hallway and downstairs done I picked up these huge panels in the week they really are a beast um, they're 225 watt 36 volt panels now clearly 36 volt uh, isn't great for if you're running on a 12 volt system it's way too high uh, but you can actually convert these to for a 12 volt system and what you do this one is they're both up this is up that way and the other one's up the other way so if we look at the bottom yeah the top that's where the connections are made uh, but on this one uh, the connections are at the bottom and if we look across the middle of the panel because all of these 
panels run in series this will go up and down right so essentially what you do is this buzz bar or bus bar you need to cut right in the middle at the back then fold the uh, buzz bar back and connect into there that way you'll have rather than a 36 volt panel you'll have two 18 volt panels now at the moment uh, I think the amperage is 8.3 that's if it's on a good day you'd be getting about 8.3 amps um, but because I'm doubling it up it'll be well 16 and a half amps off each one so combined you know that's quite a bit isn't it um well over 30 amps yeah that would these will make really good panels and also i'll be able to run them um alongside my others or as an alternative even i could switch from one set of panels to the other depending on what time of day it is yeah um so uh oh and a big thanks to anzi sorry my hands are oily because i've been working on the car today uh yeah uh thanks to anzi for these much appreciate it um and I'll show you what I'm going to do with it. It won't be in this rail's house because I've got so many other things to do, frankly. Uh, but I just thought I'd show you these. Uh, and incidentally, these these are really good quality roof panels. So, you know, to divide them up into half. So essentially, you've got two panels on each one. So you end up with four altogether suitable for a 12 volt system. Uh, whereas they wouldn't be connected the way they are. So I've just got to make that break in the centre there and tap into there. Yeah, we'll probably get around that in, to that perhaps in the spring because the four panels I've got in the garden, they are really ideal for a 12 volt system because they're 19 volts each and they're 135 watt, but they're not necessarily the most efficient panels. But these are a beast. And uh, what I'll probably do with these, I'm going to put them on my... Because you remember I'm demolishing the conservatory at the back and turn it into a kind of railway platform. Um, these can go on the roof of that because it won't be a glass roof. They're not going to be obtrusive in any way. And uh, that area of the house, or the back garden rather, does get quite a bit of sun in the afternoon. So these could work out really well. Alternatively, I could put them on my garage stroke reduced to shed <laughs> at the bottom. Because that also gets a lot of sun on one side. Um, you know, my garden doesn't face directly south, but it does face southeast, southwest, depending on where you put your panels. So it's not too bad. Uh, you couldn't really put them out the front; it would just look ridiculous. But uh, at the back, yeah, it's fine. So yeah, the two of them, you know, seventy-five pound each. I thought it was pretty good, and they are big panels. Hmm. I think we'll have some fun with those. Right. Well, it's getting late here at Ralph's house. I've uh, just been about 20 miles uh, to pick up this reel of solar cable. Um, solar cable isn't cheap, and now there's copper for that matter at the moment. You buy thick cables and anything, it'll cost you. Because, you know, for a lot of people, you know, they've got a lot of excess cable, they just tend to give them to scrap merchants, strip them, and that's it. And you can't get it. You know, it's worth it, almost worth it, worth it's weight in gold. Anyway, I've got a 100 metre reel of this four millimeter stuff uh that's the cross section of the copper it's quite chunky stuff great for solar panels especially where you know you've got a bit of a run on the cable because you get a voltage drop in it so the thicker the cable is the better uh but this stuff oh 100 meters of it you're looking at between anywhere between 95 and 125 pounds for a reel of this stuff uh but you know it's an unused one and i got it for 40 quid so I consider that a bargain. And the cable I'm using at the moment certainly is not as good as 4mm. So that will be nice to get those set up. So uh, that's it for this week. But if you have a look at Ralph's house next week, I'll have the whole cell solar setup uh, on a board and I'll explain how everything works. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe.